here we are on working with how to use a buzzer. Now, if you're following along on the Raspberry Pi project website, you're going to see that they have a just a fresh clean breadboard and they are using the buzzer to be plugged in directly to a ground GPIO pin and GPIO pin 17. Well, that's where we currently have our LED light. And I don't want to take that off yet because I want to kind of build upon this and, and do some tinkering after this step. So I'm going to go ahead and add my, my buzzer, but I'm not going to load it up the way the program um, tells me. Now keep in mind, I know you can't see this on here, that your buzzer does and should have a plus sign on one side to that leg so that you realize that that is the positive part of the circuit. Um, and these guys are a little more robust than LED lights, so you don't need a resistor for these guys either. And so I'm just going to get two wires. In my case, I'm just going to connect right here to the ground that we already have, and then I'm going to use GPIO pin 27, which is the next one after GPIO pin 17. So my code, and some of those things will look a little bit different than the project, that's just because I want to keep my LED and my buzzer on because I just want to kind of do some more learning after this step here. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to grab those wires and get those plugged in to the breadboard and the Raspberry Pi. All right, so I'm going to go ahead here and just make sure that I am plugged in to the proper components here. So we got 18 and 21. 21 is my ground, so I'm just going to go from here to the ground panel that's already connected. And then I'm going to plug in my positive wire. And I'm going to go again right below GPIO pin 17 to GPIO pin 27. Okay, now that we have that, uh, we're going to go ahead and write some new code. So I'm going to start up a, a new line of code here so that you can see how this works. And so we're going to go right here from, from GPIO0. This time we're going to import, I bet you can't guess, buzzer. Right, so now that we have that, and we're going to add the time library, we're going to import sleep again. Okay, so now what we got to do is we have to identify our variable. So we're just going to make our variable buzzer. And we're going to make that equal to the GPIO pin that we're plugged into. On the example of the site, it's 17. On mine, it's going to be 27. Okay. And then now what we're going to be doing is adding some things here that will allow us to kind of think about how to use the buzzer. Just like in Scratch, even though we had very similar blocks, it kind of looked a little bit different output or the LED, a buzzer works just like an LED. So the Python code is very similar to what we've been doing. So what will happen here, we'll just write a loop here just so you can experience this while true. Okay. What we want to do is turn um, buzzer on, okay, just like so. And we've done this with the LED on and off, and we're going to sleep. Let's do one second, and then we'll do buzzer dot off sleep one. And you can change around this a little bit if you want. And so now when we run this. We should hear a little beep here. Let's see. So it's got a little clicking noise. I don't know if you can hear it at all. So every second, it's just turning on and off with this code. So we'll go ahead and stop that here. And we can continue on here, and we can try some other things. And so if we wanted to, um, we could see if we get a beep out of this. So let's do, uh, let's wipe this out. Let's just call this beep, and we'll get rid of these. All right, so let's go ahead and run this.
So there's two types of buzzers. Um, there's an active buzzer and, and passive buzzer. And so mine's not really buzzing the way I would like it to um, with this beat, but yours might be able to do that. And so you can kind of play around with this a little bit here. Uh, this should just keep on going, but it's not, so that's okay. So let's just see if I do like five seconds here. I don't think it's gonna work. But at least with that, let me change my buzzer here and see if this will make a difference. But I think that might have been the one that wasn't very good. Oh, there we go. You can hear it now. So to stop that, we just gotta stop that program. Uh oh. Oh, it's not stopping. So what can we do if that happens, right? We can just go buzzer off. There we go. And then boom. Okay, so I had a bad buzzer. I just need to throw that one away, actually, because it's just creating a headache. So that just shows you it's very quick. It's very simple. It's very easy just how the buzzer works, just like an LED as opposed to just saying, you know, that we're changing our variable, obviously, to buzzer. We can turn it on and off. We can have it activate different beeps and noises and things like that. And this is just going to give you some time to, to play. So you've got an LED, you have a button, you know, a buzzer, very similar to where we were in the scratch um, days of, of week two. Try to mess around with some codes, see if you can get them all activated. Can the button do this or that or one or the other? Kind of play around with that and then share any new insights into your uh, Slack channel community where we're all learning. And then we move into tomorrow, then we're actually going to kind of build out upon this a little bit and we're gonna create some traffic lights. So it's gonna be really exciting um, combining the push button, the LED and the buzzer, and then obviously three LED lights for a traffic light. And we're gonna have some fun with that as well. So um, keep exploring here today. Make sure you kind of have a good understanding of these types of codes with the buttons and the buzzer. And we will see you tomorrow, my friends. As always, stay awesome. Peace.